Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, I'm Joel, and I'm tired. Just kidding. Hey, but I do want to give kudos to our, our man, James. He was the guy, the tired guy in the picture. Thanks for taking one for the team and taking that morning selfie there, bro. Is that what you look like every morning? Yeah? Your wife really loves you. I'm just kidding. Hey, so uh, I'm a teaching guy around here, and we're starting a new series called Tired. I actually wanted to call it So Tired. Anybody relate to being tired? I don't know. I've, I've been talking to even some of the peppiest among us, and they're all like, man, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. I can't sleep. I'm just tired of like, everything just seems to be constantly weighing down on me, and it's just amazing how many of us just feel exhausted all the time. I heard somebody say the other day, the world is run by tired people. <laughs> Isn't that the case? Sure. So I've been thinking about it. I was like, man, I, I am really tired. In fact, when Pastor Marcus asked me what I wanted to talk about this month, he let me pick the series. I said, I think I just want to call it Tired. <laughs> and he's like, everybody, you know, whenever I say that, everybody laughs, but I think it's because we can all relate. And I started thinking, I'm like, all the stuff I'm tired of, you know? So like I thought of this thing, you know the first thing I'm super tired of is passwords. Yeah. <laughs> so like you get on the phone and like the other day I was at, I was at the grocery store trying to see if I had enough money to, to like buy something and, and I'm like dig, put it in. It's like, oh, we're going to send you this code to get into your account. Yes, your password's correct, but you got to get this code. Yeah. I'm like, okay, code. I'm like, where's the code? Where's the code? Where's the code? I'm like, you can go and go buy me in the line, you know. Where's it? No code. Send code again. Send code. Finally, I get the code, and I get in. Finally, like three times later, I get in, and it's like, oh, you, you got to change your password. <laughs> I'm like, so I put in a password, and it's like, well, you can't use a password you've used in the last 10 passwords. I'm like, just trying to see if I got enough money for a case of gum here. Like, what the heck? So frustrating, all these passwords. The other day, I couldn't, I was like, last year, I couldn't get into my bank for two months. Because one bank bought out another, this is ridiculous. I'm not, I don't know why I'm still banking with them. But anyway, <laughs> this one bank bought out my bank. And then they're like, oh, well, we had to change all your account numbers. I'm like, you couldn't have like made it seamless? No, no, you'll have to come into the bank to get a new password. I'm like, okay, well, so I show up at the bank and there's like 40 people. And they're like, well, you have to wait in line. It's an average wait of three hours. I'm like, what? to get into my own account? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, sorry, it's security. I'm just sick of passwords, man. <laughs> tired of it. You know what else I'm tired of? These two goobers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. It's just like, I don't know what he's saying half the time. And this guy, I'm like, just shut up. <laughs> like, I'm tired of politics. I don't know about you. Yeah. You know what else I'm tired of is propaganda. Yeah. It's like, I can't watch anything without somebody trying to like shove something down my throat. Or like my kid, I'm like watching a show with her and like, hey, this little puppy dog named Joey has decided it's actually a cat and wants to be called Puddles. Let's all celebrate the dog wanting to be a cat. And you're like, what is this? Like propaganda everywhere. I'm just sick of propaganda. Y'all are really quiet. Sorry if I stepped on toes. <laughs> Here's another thing I'm sick of, eating healthy. Amen. Why couldn't God have just made it that we can fuel ourselves on burgers and fries and Dr. Pepper? <laughs> I'm so tired of it, and I think I'm eating healthy, and everybody's like, no, actually what you need is wheatgrass. No, you need, no, you need microgreens. No, you need to chug this thing. And I'm like, I'm just tired of eating healthy. Anybody relate to that? Driving, driving in today, we stopped at this gas station, and it said out front, it said, special deal. A big 64-ounce Coca-Cola is only like 49 cents when you buy it with the breakfast. And I was like, it's cool now to drink Coke with breakfast? That's shocking to me. Some of you are like, I never knew it wasn't cool. So here's another thing I'm tired of. Allergies. How much pollen can these trees pump out? Everybody's like, oh, it's allergies. And I'm like, how come it's been going on for six months? I don't think it's allergies. What is it? My eyes are itchy. I'm walking through. People are like, are you okay, bro? It's just allergies, man. 
did an eye test the other day because I thought I was literally losing my vision. They're like, oh, it's just allergies. I'm like, anybody relate to that? You're just tired, man. Super tired of it. And I know some of you, you guys probably have 10 more things you're tired of. Some of you are just tired of the battles with your spouse. You're just like, I'm just ready to throw in the towel, man. I'm tired. I, I don't know what else to do. Some of you are tired of your battles with your kids. You're just like, I can't do this anymore. I'm just so exhausted. Some of y'all tired of your battles with your finances. Man, I just, I'm so exhausted of just constantly not having enough. And then when I feel like I'm getting enough, I go to the store and it's, you know, $12 for a dozen eggs. Like, golly, gee, it's like, what's going on here? And all the shortages. And you're like, why are these so expensive? Well, there's shortages. Everything's shortaged right now. Like, what is the deal? And we're just, I think we're all just, we're just tired. And it's not, it's not like, one big thing, I think it's a bunch of cumulative things in our lives that have just added up and we're all just tired. And right in the middle of that, Jesus comes along and he says this, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. You know what else I'm tired of? Is Mark's on my screen. Hang on. <laughs> Anyway, come to me, all you anal retentive people. All right. <laughs> come to me. <laughs> I get up. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Weary. Man, that's a good way to describe it, right? Yeah. Some of us are just weary. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Now this yoke, this isn't, this isn't like a yoke of an egg. This is a yoke that they would put on two oxen when they wanted to hoe through, a, plow through really hard ground. And they would put it on two oxen and they'd put these, this big old piece of wood on them and they would pull it together and they'd break, break the, the hard ground. And Jesus is basically, what's interesting about this is he's saying, look, he's not promising you no challenge no responsibility, no weight you have to carry. He said, you're going to have to carry a weight. He says, but the weight that I'm asking you to carry, it's actually pretty light. And if you actually link up with him, we're going to talk about it in a minute. If you link up with him, it's actually, you're going to carry what you're responsible for because we all have a responsibility to carry. You don't get off in life. If you're trying to be responsibility-less in life, it's just going to create an unfulfilling life for you because you're made to carry some weight and, and, and take care of things. He says, my yoke is easy to learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart. This word actually he uses gentle and humble in heart. It's actually a combination of words that it's really fascinating because it means, uh, that's just a kiddo. Don't worry about that. Uh, it says, he's basically saying, I'm really, I'm strong enough to carry the weight for you is actually what he's saying. But I use my strength within, with control, which is what we call meekness. And he says, and you will find rest for your souls. As you're carrying the weight that you're made to carry, You'll actually find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So here's my translation of what that means. If this is the only thing you walk away with today, it's this right here. If the weight of life feels heavy, you're carrying something you weren't meant to carry alone. Amen. Let's close in prayer. No, I'm just kidding. How many of us you just, you, you feel alone. We're going to talk about next week about loneliness. Because if you haven't noticed, loneliness is at an epidemic high in our world. It seems like we've never been more connected. But if you look at statistics, a, a new stat came out just last week about loneliness in America. We're lonely. And some of you, man, you feel like you're, nobody's got your back. Nobody's helping you and you're just carrying it alone. And Jesus says, you're not meant to carry the weight of this life alone. There is a weight you're supposed to carry. But if it's heavier than you can carry, there's a good chance you're carrying something you're not supposed to be carrying or you're trying to do it by yourself. So I, I was thinking about this because I have to constantly remind myself of this. I'm like, because I've just been feeling really tired for the last few months. I started thinking, I'm like, what is it that, that I'm, what is it that I'm constantly bumping up against and carrying? And I, I kind of came up with this, uh, this is kind of a, here's what's wrong with Joel. All right, you ready? And I only say this because I think some of y'all are going to be able to relate to this, right? These are my problems, but y'all got problems too. I know, all right? <laughs> the first thing is, you know, my, one of my major problems is I'm constantly fearful. I have this weight of anxiety that is, ask my poor wife, 
She's, she doesn't have any anxiety. I am her anxiety. But <laughs> I have this constant weight of like impending doom just hanging over me. Life can be fine, but I'm just like, oh my God, everything's about to hit the fan. And she's like, well, everything's fine. I'm like, that's what you think. <laughs> and I have this constant weight of impending doom. It's just hanging over me. Now, this gets this anxiety. I have to remind myself every morning. I have to get up and say, Joel, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, is going to guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. But I have to remind myself of that. Because when I look at the world around me, everything seems like a threat to me. I feel like everything is a potential threat to me. Any of you relate to that? You're just like, everything is threatening me. Some of us, it's because of the way we brought up. I have really great, I was brought up in a great family, so I don't know, just, I guess I'm just inherently flawed, but <laughs> it's this constant weight of anxiety that something's going to go wrong and I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. That's just me. I don't know about y'all. Anyway, you know what else is, is, is my problem? I do everything way too fast. Oh, Bill says he's worked with me and I run everywhere. I do run everywhere. And here's the thing. It's really great. Like people are like, how'd you get that done so fast? I'm like, because I'll push anything out of the way that's in my way. <laughs> but I do things so fast and there's some stuff that just doesn't happen fast. It's like, man, this is God, what's the deal? And you know, God's like, I'm working on this, but I got to do it in my time, not your time. Like, I don't like your time, God. And he's like, well, deal with it because I'm the world king of the universe. <laughs> And I get frustrated and I get angry when stuff doesn't happen as fast as I want it to, when relationships aren't restored as quickly as I want it to, when trust isn't restored as quickly as I want it to, when I can't get stuff done as quick as I want it to. Anybody relate? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> you know what else is my problem? I had to find an F thing just to show you all how effed up, up, effed up I am. But <laughs> I am incredibly forceful. We could call this a control freak. There's your F, freak. I feel the need to control everything. In fact, my dad used to joke. He's like, Joel, your motto should be, there would be no problems in the world if everybody just do what I said, right? <laughs> I feel like I've got the answers for everything. But people just don't want to do what I say. And I get frustrated, and the world doesn't work out like I want it to, and things don't tie a ni nice bow on it at the end where I'm like, that, sh that should have ended better than that. It was I, I'm just a control freak in it, and, and I like to fix stuff. And there's just certain stuff I can't fix. I'm like, I, I got to be able to fix this. And you know what happens when I can't fix it? I just get angry and frustrated and disappointed. So I'm walking around, moping around. And I feel like there's this heavy weight on the world carrying all this stuff. At this point, all of y'all are going to come pray for my wife after this. But <laughs> please do, please do. But anybody relate to this? Look, I, I know you do. I know a lot of you can relate to this heavy weight of anxiety. You've been feeling it. I mean, anxiety is at an all-time high in our world, especially among the youth. You're just feeling the weight of this crazy world, and everybody's telling you the world's about to end, and it's never been this bad before. And listen, it's been way worse than this before, trust me. Like, it has. It's bad, but it's been way worse than this before. At least we're not worried about plagues of locusts coming and eating the crop and us being done for the, you know, for the whole year, Right? But we have this anxiety that you just can't get. And here's the challenge with some of our fear, right? It's like, it's irrational fear. That's my problem. And everybody's like, well, facts over fear. I'm like, hey, buddy, the thing with rational facts is my fear is irrational. Rational doesn't work on irrational. <laughs> Look at the facts. I'm trying, but it's irrational, my fear. I know I shouldn't be afraid of this, but I am. That's why there's this powerful verse at 1 John. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Yeah. The only thing that's stronger than fear, because fear is such a powerful thing, is God's perfect love. That's true. That's true. That's Some of you guys can relate to this. You're just, you've been trying. You've been running so hard. You've been feeling like, I know a lot of people tell me that after COVID, they just felt like they lost two years of their life. And they're like, I had to make up for lost time. And they're running rampant. I think some of us have tra trauma from like, what if they shut the world down again? I got to run and get all of life in as much as I can right now before it ends. So everybody's out there trying to live their best life and everybody's freaking out, trying to get everything in in time. And then some of y'all, you're, you're welcome. You're with me over here. You're like, man, there's nothing that can't be done if I don't just push hard enough. But you've been pushing 
and pushing and pushing with your son, with your daughter, with your job, and it's not working. You're just frustrated, angry, you hate your life, and you're miserable. I can relate. <laughs> I was, you know, I got this triangle here, and if you've ever heard me talk for about five minutes or more, you've heard me talk about this triangle right here. Because really, if you think about what the weight is that we're carrying, all of the weight that we're carrying, the heavy weight we're carrying that Jesus is like, give that to me, comes down to these three basic things. And I'm going to blow through this. If you're really interested in this triangle, you've never heard it before, it's in this book. It's available in the back. I did a whole book on it, okay? But I'm going to blow through this. These are the three things that drive all of your hopes and dreams, and they drive all your greatest fears. The first one is security. We all have a desperate need within us for security. For some of us, it's relational security. That's why some, some of us in here have just gotten out of a marriage and you're already dating someone because you're terrified of being alone. Like, I need the security of being with somebody. Some of you, it's financial security, and that's the reason you're putting in so many hours and your wife's complaining about how many hours you're putting at work. But you're like, I've got to provide. I've got to provide. I'll, I, I vow to make sure my kids never have to go through the poverty I went through as a kid. And you're fighting and fighting and fighting, trying to provide for them something you never had growing up because you want that security. And you say it's for them, but it's also for you. We all need connection. Connection is just a sense of feeling seen, heard, esteemed, valued. And some of us are carrying the weight of, man, I just need, I need somebody to care about me. And you're doing whatever you can to make somebody care about you. And so what you'll do is you'll just go say yes to everything and you can never say no and people are taking advantage of you. But you think by just keeping on saying yes and keeping on doing those things for people, you're just going to get, maybe they'll love me if I just don't ever say no. And the weight of it is just wearing on you and you're becoming resentful, but you're like, but if I stand up for myself and say no, they may not love me. And they're afraid of that connection. For some of us, welcome to my corner. Our greatest fear is of empower, not having empowerment or control. I'm always trying to set things up to where I'm in charge and can control the situation. And man, it gets tiring running the world. <laughs> Doesn't it? It gets really tiring running the world because I wasn't made to run the world. And so Jesus comes along and he says, guys, this, this, this is what's, what's really cool about what he says. He says, guys, don't worry saying what will you eat, what will we drink, what will we wear. And what that rings up to me is this. Don't worry about your security, your connection, and your empowerment or control. Because even the pagans run after these things. Even people who don't follow Christ, they run after those things. And your heavenly father, he knows you need them. God made you and he knows what you need. He knows you need that security. He knows you need that connection and that empowerment. But he made you to get it in him. And when you're trying to find it in anything apart from him, the weight is going to be really heavy. That's true. It's going to be unbearable because yep. you weren't made to find it anywhere but linked up with him in that yoke with him. And he says, so don't worry, but do this. Seek first his kingdom or the kingdom of God, another translation says, and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. He says, if you're worried about security, connection, and control, don't seek those things. Seek something higher. Lift your vision and look for something higher because as you seek him, he's the one who will make all these other things around you. He'll take care of that. Because trust me on this, God is very, very powerful. With one snap of his fingers, he could fix everything in an instant. Nothing is holding him back. Nothing is... Now, I don't know why he doesn't choose to just pour out his power. There's a couple people I'd like him to pour out his wrath on. But he, in his grace, he holds back. And he's like, no, 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 I'm gracious. And you need to be glad that I'm so gracious because the first person that deserved the wrath, right here. So he holds back his power because remember it says he's, he's gentle and lowly in heart. He's very powerful, but he chooses to hold it back to give us his strength as we need it. So he says, you're seeking all these things and you're, it's, it's weighing you down. It's weighing you down feeling this, man, I just can't do this parenting thing. I can't do it. These kids, it never stops. They never go away. I just like, they're always there. I saw a thing the other day. It said, parents never truly go on vacation. They just watch their kids in another town. Amen. 
and we love our kids. Don't get me wrong. I love my kid. I'd kill for her. I'd die for her. I'd probably kill for her too, but... <laughs> but man, it's just, it's exhausting. And sometimes you wake up and you're like, again? We got to do this again. Why can't she just stay in bed? Like, can you just sleep all day, sweetheart? Just sleep. And then when she is sleeping all day, we're like, oh my gosh, is she sick? Anyways, <laughs> welcome to parenthood, right? But we're carrying all this, and Jesus says, look, I know you need all this, and I want to help you carry that weight. So, so here's, here's my kind of final point. Carry only what you can without getting tired. And if Jesus asks you to carry something bigger, know he'll be there to carry it with you. You know, when you go, God's desire for us is to get stronger. Listen, life is not going to get easier, folks. We have to get stronger. That's just a reality. It doesn't get easier. We get stronger. But the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So the goal is to always be casting our anxiety on him, leaning on him, trusting in him to carry the weight with us. And you know, if you go to the gym and you're trying to get stronger, the dumbest thing you can do is lift something above your grade. So if you get in there, you've never been to the gym before, and you're like, I'm going to bench press 400 pounds. You're going to kill yourself. Or can you imagine trying to lift up 400 pounds? You're just going to hurt yourself, and you're not going to get stronger in the process. You, the only way you get stronger is starting with what you can. You're like, well, I get in there, all I can lift is those 2.5 pounders. Start there. If that's what you've got right now, lift that, what you're capable of lifting, and as you lift that little by little, you go up to the 5, and then you go to the 10. And you go to the 15 and some of us go, well, I should be lifting 400 pounds by now. You, listen, you lift what you can lift. Some of us in our life, we go back and we go, man, how come he can lift so much more than me? Look, maybe he had an advantage in life, but you can't sit around and focus on that. Start with what you've got and trust that when you, when you get to something you can't carry on your own, Jesus is going to say, all right, this one's on me. Link up with me and we'll carry this 400 pounds together. But you can't carry this 400 pounds by yourself right now. And here's what's really important about it. Once you link up with him, when two oxen are right next to each other, if one pulls ahead, they're going to end up carrying more weight. So you stay in step with Jesus. If you start running ahead because you're fast, like, yeah, we're fast. You're going to start carrying weight. That he's like, hey, hold up, buddy. Watch my feet. I'm not going at that pace. And you go slow, and, you, and the weight is carried with him. Right. And if you go too slow, you're living in fear. Well, I don't know if I should go forward. And Jesus is like, come on, we're moving forward. And you're like, nye, nye. You're going to create more burden for yourself. Fear holds you back from moving forward. So he says, stay in lockstep with me, walk with me, and I'll carry the weight you can't carry. So if you're carrying a weight this morning and you're saying, I can't do it anymore, maybe it's time you say, Jesus, I can't do this anymore. So show me what I can carry. What am I responsible for? And here's the beautiful thing. What you're responsible for is usually right in your immediate vicinity. You can't change what the government's doing. Sure, you can vote, right? You can't change all the insanity around you, but you know what you can work on is giving your best to the people around you, your family, your kids. Stay focused on that, and you know, that's how the world changes. One person at a time impacting their area of influence, taking responsibility, carrying the weight for what's right in front of them, and God may ask you to step up into an area. We had a, one of our members of the church felt like God was calling him to city council. It felt like it was a call. And so when he does that, God gives him the grace. There's this one point where Paul was complaining. He's like, God, I can't carry this anymore. I can't carry the weight of this. And God said to Paul, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is, is, is shown in your weakness. So he's saying, look, you have the grace you need to carry the burden right in front of you right now. But if life starts getting heavy, you're probably trying to carry something you don't have the grace for right now. So let it go and say, God, I'm going to need you to help me out on this one. And then you stay in lockstep with him. And what ha what's really cool is as you stay in lockstep with him, you just start slowly moving ahead. And eventually you look back and you go, look how far we came. And it didn't even feel that heavy because you were walking it with the one who has all power to carry the weight with you. If you're tired this morning, know this. God does not want you walking around tired and exhausted. He wants you walking around with the full abundant life. So maybe it's time you cast some of your cares on him. Let him carry what you can't carry. Because if the weight has gotten too heavy, you're probably carrying something you weren't meant to carry on your own. And it's just as simple as this. Drop into your knees and say, Lord, put your yoke on me. 
I, I'm tired of carrying all this stuff. I, you know that Greek myth of the guy Atlas that has the weight of the world on his shoulders? Maybe that's what you feel like this morning. But God's saying, no, nope, I'm the one that carries the weight of the world on my shoulders. You carry the responsibility I've put in front of you. And if it's getting too, too painful and you're just too tired, you're probably trying to do something that's out of your domain. So leave it to me. And it just takes surrendering and recognizing I need him. Oh, I need him. Every hour I need him to carry that weight with me. You guys receive that? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that you did not call us to walk this journey alone. You sent your Holy Spirit to guide us and, and your spirit is with us. Thank you that we have the grace we need for what we, what, what's in front of us right now. The grace to deal with uh, the family situation. The grace to care for our kids, to be good parents. The grace to, to, to go through these financial hardships, Lord. But you're going to be, you are, as we lean into you, Lord, and we seek first your kingdom, not our security, not our connection, not our control, but as we seek your kingdom, you provide all those things. And my God will supply all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. If you're here this morning and you have not given your life to Jesus, that's the first step on the journey of getting that weight off of your shoulders. I'm going to say a prayer, and if you say this prayer and mean it in your heart, God's going to come forgive you of your sins, transfer you out of the kingdom of darkness, and transfer you into the kingdom of light, get you an eternal address set up with Him. So let's say this prayer together. Lord Jesus, we repent of our sin. We turn from our way. We turn to your way. Help us walk in your truth. And hey, if you just said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. We've got some resources for you uh, there at the back. You guys can stand. Man, take a deep breath. Put the weight off your shoulders. Give it to Jesus. And you go out there and have a peaceful and blessed week. Be blessed. You're dismissed. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.